As a follow-up to the last video on head waves, now we're finally ready to get into the creeping wave technique or 30-70-70. Quick correction to the last video, I referred to the combination of the direct shear and the head wave. I referred to that as a bulk shear. That's not correct. Actually, the direct shear, the one that just comes out of the bottom of the probe just because of Snell's law, that's actually called the bulk shear. The other one's the head wave. They just sort of work together. Ed Ginzel has already done all of this photoelastic visualization of creeping waves. In fact, he's done over 20 papers that are on ndt.net about photoelastic visualization. Number 23, 24, and 25 are specifically on creeping waves. I suggest that you check those out. There's no such thing as a creeping wave mode. It's been described properly in literature for years as the upper or lower edge of a high angle long wave, the part that touches the upper or lower surface. And that part sort of creeps or glides along that surface and is very sensitive to surface breaking cracks. But use of the term creeping wave implies it's a mode when it's actually not. It's just a long wave. Just like when we steer a shear wave up towards the second critical angle, when it touches that top surface, it makes a Rayleigh wave. That's why we already did the Rayleigh wave video. As we steer a long wave up towards the first critical angle, it will mode convert on the surface and it generates what we call a head wave, which is actually a shear wave. We already did the video on that. And they're called head waves known only for reasons because of German seismologists in the 1920s. With the two wave modes coming in from the top and then the mode conversions from the bottom, you're going to see a lot of different sources of reflection. There are three predominant ones. Uh, you're going to see a long wave reflection. So that's from the 70 degree. That's going to be longitudinal, longitudinal, LL. That might be, say, from crack tips. You'll also see the same thing from the 30 degree wall of shear. That's transverse, transverse, or TT. And you'll also see that 30, 70, 70 mode conversion. That's the wall of shear bouncing off the bottom, mode converting into a long wave, bouncing off of, say, a crack, and then coming back to you at 70 degrees. And that is your 30, 70, 70, or the transverse long, long, TLL. You can use any number of probes marketed as creeping wave probes. Remember, they're just high angle longitudinal probes. Now, some of them are dualies. Those have advantages. Some of them are side by side dualies. Some of them are uh, sort of front and back dually. In this case, I'm just going to use a phased array transducer, the same one I used in the last video. I'll use this block here to illustrate the signals that we're going to see. It has a series of notches cut on the bottom. I'm just going to use the four millimeter deep notch in the middle. As I move the probe from far away, close in, the first one that peaks right there, that is the corner trap from the high angle long wave. So that's an LL. As I move a little bit closer, you can see the tip diffracted signal in the front. That is another LL. And as I keep going, that one right there is the 30, 70, 70. So transverse long, long or TLL. And as I go a little bit further, you see the big one right here. That's the corner trap from the shear wave or TT, transverse, transverse. Now let me back up just a little bit. You see that signal behind the corner trap, that little one right there? That's the tip diffracted signal from that shear wave. That's just another TT. Now, if that seems like a lot, it's because it is. That's what it looks like on a plate with a notch in it. Let's check out a weld. In this case, I've taken a weld plate. This is one inch thick and I've flipped it over. That's because there's a toe crack, a really nice toe crack on the top side. We're going to pretend it's on the bottom side and inspect it from the bottom. As I move the probe in, you can see that long, gentle sweep of the long wave corner trap. That's right there. And you can see the tip diffracted signal from the top of the crack right there. And then as I move it closer, we're going to get that 30, 70, 70, which is right here. And if I move it right up over top, you're going to see that shear wave signal from the corner trap. And if I back up a little bit, we should see a little bit of a tip diffracted signal right about there. The technique relies on the presence and amplitude of these signals to tell you whether you have something and how bad it is. If all you get is the corner trap signal, then you have a backside crack that probably doesn't have much height to it. If you also get the 30, 70, 70, then it has some ligament height. And then we have to get into sizing. Whew. Here it is on phased array, super easy. I can see the ID rumble just a little bit. I can see the corner trap. I can see the tip diffracted signal on the top. And if I move it just to the right spot, you'll actually be able to see the tip diffracted signal on the reflection. What if we were doing this just with conventional UT, which is probably most of you? Well, then we'll just switch this over to the A scan only and take a look. We'll set our angle to 60 degrees and move the probe back and forth here. We can find the indication there. There is the corner trap. You can see it's big and ugly and it lines up with that B0 line. 
And then if I move the probe just a little bit carefully, you can see there's the tip diffracted signal in front. I'll take a little bit of the gain off so we can actually peak that properly. And there it is right there. So we could get a height on that and actually do the whole detection and sizing on the same setup. The takeaway is that there is no such thing as a creeping wave mode. There never was. It was always described as the periphery of a high angle long wave. That long wave won't convert into a head wave, which blends up with the original shear wave. We've just got two things. But then when they hit the backside, they bounce. They turn into mode conversions and it gets crazy. So before things get crazy, I would try conventional UT first or phased array if you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.